If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video first and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. For parts A through D, the question notes that the switch that's marked S1 is being closed. So what we'll do is go ahead and close that switch. And then since S2 remains open, we can actually eliminate this portion of the circuit from the first four parts of the question. What we will do next is simplify this circuit until we have a single equivalent capacitor. And to do that, what we'll do is first note that these two capacitors are in series with one another. And we know that when capacitors are in series, we can combine them into one equivalent capacitor according to this equation here. So what we'll do is simply take the value of C1, which happens to be one microfarad, and then plug in also C3, which happens to be three microfarads. We'll add these two together, which gives us four thirds. And then to solve for CEQ, the equivalent capacitance, we can invert both sides of the equation. So we're left with CEQ over one, which is just CEQ, of course, and that equals three over four microfarads. So those two capacitors will be combined into an equivalent capacitor whose capacitance is three divided by four microfarads. We'll do a similar process for C2 and C4. And so we'll plug in the value of C2, which is two microfarads. C4 is four microfarads. Adding together on the right side gives us three fourths microfarads. And then when we invert both sides of the equation, we can see that the equivalent capacitance is equal to four over three microfarads. So that would be the equivalent capacitance for these two capacitors. Now, once we know those values, what we'll do is redraw the circuit. We'll combine C1 and C3 into a single capacitor and do the same thing for C2 and C4. We will next note that the remaining capacitors are in parallel with one another. And to combine parallel capacitors, it's a little bit easier. All we have to do is add the individual capacitances. So in this case, we'll go ahead and add the 3 fourths microfarads plus the 4 thirds microfarads and we get 25 twelfths microfarads. So now we'll redraw the circuit again and we'll combine these two capacitors into a single equivalent capacitor. Now once we have the circuit down to a single capacitor, what we want to do is calculate the total charge that's present throughout the circuit. And that's going to be calculated using this equation where we just multiply the capacitance by the potential difference. So we'll take our equivalent capacitance and multiply it by the potential difference of 12 volts. And that was stated in the question to be the potential difference produced by the battery. And when we multiply this, we can see that we get 25 micro coulombs for the charge that's present on this capacitor. So let's go ahead and label that. We are next going to move our way backwards through the circuit until we reach the original drawing. And when we do that, we wanna follow these two rules. When we move backwards through a circuit, we're going to bring the charge or Q with us if the capacitors are in a series arrangement. And then we'll bring the potential difference, or V, backwards to a parallel arrangement. So let's see how these rules apply. Starting with this equivalent capacitor and working backwards to the two that it came from, we can see that it came from two capacitors that were parallel. And according to the rules, that means we're going to bring with us the potential difference. Now, the potential difference across this battery was 12 volts. And so what we'll do is mark 12 volts on both of these capacitors right here. Now, what you'll notice is we're missing the charge on this capacitor as well as this one, but that can be calculated using the same equation from before. All we have to do is take the capacitance and multiply by the potential difference. So for the first capacitor, if we take the 3 fourths microfarads and multiply it by the 12 volts, we can see that we will have a charge of nine microcoulombs. So that would be the charge here. And then for the other capacitor, we would take the 4 thirds microfarads and also multiply it by 12 volts. And when we do that, we get 16 microcoulombs. So we can label 16 microcoulombs on this capacitor. Next, we can move backwards from this capacitor to the two that it came from, which were C1 and C3. Notice when you're moving backwards from that capacitor to C1 and C3 that these capacitors are in a series arrangement. So if we move backwards to series, we're going to bring with us the charge. So the charge on this capacitor was nine microcoulombs, which means it will be the same for that capacitor as well as this one. And then when we move backwards from this capacitor to the two that it came from, which were C2 and C4, we're moving backwards to a series arrangement. So once again, we're going to bring with us the charge of 16 microcoulombs.
And so we can now answer parts A through D. The charge on capacitor 1 was 9 microcoulombs. The charge on capacitor 2 was 16 microcoulombs. The charge on capacitor 3 was 9 microcoulombs. And the charge on capacitor 4 was 16 microcoulombs. Now on to the remaining parts of the question. And for those parts, we are told that both switches are closed. So let's go ahead and close both switches. Now by closing the two switches, that's going to change the nature of this circuit. We're still going to combine the capacitors until we reach one single capacitor. It's just going to work a little bit differently this time. So in this case, we're going to have to first combine C1 and C2, since they're in parallel with one another, as well as C3 and C4. So let's go ahead and use the parallel capacitor equation, which again is simply the sum of the two capacitances. So we would take C1 and add it to C2. And C1 is 1 microfarad, C2 is 2 microfarads, we'll get 3 microfarads. And then for the other arrangement, we're simply going to be adding C3 plus C4. So we'll have 3 microfarads plus 4 microfarads, we'll make 7 microfarads. Now we'll go ahead and redraw the circuit, but we'll combine though C1 and C2 as well as C3 and C4. Now that we've redrawn the circuit, we can see that the remaining capacitors are in series with one another. And of course, when we have series capacitors, we have to obey this equation. And so we'll go ahead and plug in the first capacitance of 3. And the second one is 7. We'll add those together, which will give us 10 over 21. And then we can invert both sides of the equation so that the equivalent capacitance becomes 21 over 10. So let's redraw the circuit and combine those two capacitors. As before, we'll go ahead and calculate the total charge by taking the capacitance of 21 tenths and multiplying it by the potential difference of 12. And when we do that, we get about 25.2. This is still in microcoulombs. So that's the charge on this single equivalent capacitor. Now we will move our way backwards following the two rules. So when we move backwards from this capacitor to the two that it came from, we can see that those two are in series with one another, so we're going to bring with us the charge that we just determined. So that's 25.2 microcoulombs on each one. What we're missing from these two capacitors is the potential difference. Now we know that Q is equal to C times V. If we divide both sides of that equation by C, we can see that the potential difference is simply the charge divided by the capacitance. So we'll take the charge and divide it by the capacitance, and that's going to give us the volts for each one. So for this capacitor right here, we've set up that calculation, and we see that the potential difference or volts turns out to be 8.4. So we can label that on that capacitor. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll divide this charge by this capacitance. And when we do that, we get 3.6 volts. Now we can finally move back to the original circuit. So we're going to move backwards from this capacitor to the two that it came from, which happen to be C1 and C2. And notice C1 and C2 are in parallel, so we're going to bring with us the volts following those rules. So we have 8.4 volts here as well as here. And then this capacitor came from C3 and C4, which are in parallel, so we're going to bring with us the 3.6 volts. And now all that's left to do is to calculate the charge on each of the capacitors. And of course, to do that, we'll use Q equals C times V. So for capacitor 1, we can see the capacitance is 1 microfarad, and the potential difference is 8.4 volts. And so that's going to give us a charge of 8.4 microcoulombs. So we can label that on C1. And basically, you're going to do the same thing for the other capacitors. You're going to multiply their capacitance times their potential difference. So for C2, when you do that, you should get 16.8 microcoulombs. For C3, you should get 10.8 microcoulombs. And then finally, for C4, you should get 14.4 microcoulombs. So those charges will be the answers to parts E, F, G, and H, since the question wanted the charge on capacitor 1, 2, 3, and 4.